Awesome. So thanks so much for having me to share my research with you. Um, in my work, I'm interested in the evolution of behavioral diversity and specifically how it's shaped by underlying physiological mechanisms. And I do this in birds. So in my postdoc, um, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the, uh, Indiana University in the Roswell lab. And I study obligate cavity nesting species of birds. And so what this means is these species of birds require a cavity to nest, but these cavities are limited. And we think that this can generate strong selection to both obtain and then maintain and defend access to a cavity in both females and males. And so I've set out to ask in a phylogenetic context across species of birds, whether the repeated evolution of cavity nesting across different avian families has selected for the parallel evolution of competitive behavior and associated physiology. And so my prediction is that in birds that cavity nest, they will have higher territorial aggression, along with changes in their neuroendocrine phenotypes, which includes things like higher testosterone secretion and the enhanced uh, expression of genes that promote aggression in the brain. And so today I'm gonna to show you um, data from two species pairs in two different avian families. Um, so we see on the left, the American robin and the Eastern bluebird, those are thrushes. And then on the right, the um, barn swallow and tree swallow are in the swallow family. Um, and so to measure aggression in these birds, I conducted a five minute assay with a taxidermic mount like you see here. This is a tree swallow attacking a taxidermic mount at a nest box. Um, and we also play a vocal stimulus and we measure a suite of behaviors, um, including physical attacks. And so with each avian family within the thrushes and the swallows, what I found is that the cavity nesting species spend more time attacking the taxidermic mount than their open cup nesting relatives. So cavity nesting species are more aggressive. And interestingly, this pattern held both for females and for males. So both females and males in the cavity nesting species here, the bluebirds and the tree swallows are more aggressive in response to this simulated intruder. But what could be producing this aggression? So I looked at testosterone. Um, this is levels of testosterone in circulation in the blood. And we see in blue here are the males and that te overall testosterone was significantly higher in the males, but this pattern didn't um, differ across males of different species. But in females, we did see some interesting um, patterns where within the thrush family, so between the American robin and the eastern bluebird, the eastern bluebird females did have higher levels of testosterone in circulation, which could relate to them also having higher aggression, although we did not see that difference in barn swallows and tree swallows. So next, we used RNA-seq to look at gene expression in a part of the brain called the ventromedial telencephalon, which contains a region that's similar to our amygdala, and it's involved in the regulation of social behaviors. And so I'm, what I'm showing you here are some predictions. So if cavity nesting species use similar patterns of gene expression in the brain across the two families, we might see a pattern on the left of concordance, where there's this linear relationship um, when you compare differences, say, between robin and bluebird or barn swallow and tree swallow, where the tree swallows and the bluebirds are using similar patterns of gene expression that could relate to aggression. Alternatively, on the right, we might expect to see a non-concordant pattern in gene expression, so more like a scatter. And this could suggest that these species are using different mechanisms um, of gene expression to promote aggression. And so if we look at what we found, this is around 100 genes that have previously been implicated in aggression, and we see pretty much a scatter. So different sets of genes might explain divergence in aggressive behavior for each of the avian families. In other words, there are many ways to build an aggressive bird. And so in summary, in this case study, at least for two species pairs, I found that cavity nesting species are more aggressive, both females and males. But so far, it looks like there are many alternative, uh, both hormonal and neurogenomic routes to building an aggressive bird. And um, in the future, I hope to conduct this work 
uh, at the Emaquan Preserve, specifically focusing on the species care of uh, species pair of house sparrows and Eurasian tree sparrows. Eurasian tree sparrows are obligate, so they have to nest in a cavity, whereas uh, house sparrows are more flexible. Um, and with that, I will thank my lab and you guys for your attention. Great. Thank you very much for that presentation, Sarah. Uh, Doug, is there a question or two? We have a, a minute we can do something in. You're muted, Doug. I have one. I do have one so far, thanks, Tom. Um, with the sometimes dramatic land use changes that we see, it seems like there would be decreasing numbers of cavities for these birds. Do you anticipate over the long term that these differences between cavity nesters and others would increase? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's certainly been documented that uh, suitable habitat for cavity nesting species is declining. Um, whether that's rapid enough to say induce a, a change that we can detect is a, is a really good question. Um, I would expect though that the evolutionary pressure uh, of these limited cavities is something that has been shaping these species for a long time, um, but that they may not be able to adapt um, in ways that other species that can nest more flexibly can. And so because of that restricted habitat, they are more um, challenged to breed than other species. Good, thank you. Tom? Oh, wait, we got one. You got time for one more, Tom? Uh, we do, because I was talking with myself muted. <laughs> so um, Sharon asks, what was your favorite species of bird to work with? Oh, OK, so probably the tree swallows, um, because the females were actually more aggressive than the males. And, and I've been interested in that species. Um, to try to understand if that's a paradox, why the females are so aggressive in that species, or if that is something that we find generally in cavity nesters. So I was pretty surprised to find that both female bluebirds and male bluebirds are similarly aggressive. Um, and I, I would say my future most excited species is gonna be the prothonotary warbler. <laughs>